the chairman of the Transportation Infrastructure Committee, Mr. Uh, DePazio. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for this. Uh, and Admiral Fagan, uh, welcome to your first uh, formal presentation. Uh, congratulations again. Uh, and I'm really pleased to see that your intention is to make the uh, workforce uh, your highest priority. And uh, as the uh, ranking member just mentioned, we've finally begun to uh, invest in capitalization of assets that, uh, that the Coast Guard needs. That's been quite a struggle getting to the icebreakers and the other things. Um, but, um, you know, we're still obviously, you know, in terms of our shoreside facilities, which impact your workforce dramatically, um, you know, way, way, way behind. And, and that's something that Congress needs to do better in terms of finding funds for you. I mean, it's great when I go visit stations and I see, oh, yeah, but the, the crew here just renovated the station themselves. I mean, uh, I don't think if you go on to a Marine or Air, I was in the Air Force or Army base that uh, you find that the troops are doing that kind of work. They bring in contractors. So, I mean, I, I love the attitude of the Coast Guard, uh, but we've really got to do, do better uh, by that. Um, so housing, uh, you know, issues about uh, child care. Uh, I, I'm really going to be interested to hear, you know, how you're uh, hoping to meet the recruiting challenges in this very difficult environment. I mean, I, it, according to what staff wrote here uh, in a survey, only 9% of eligible young people in America are interested in service at this point in time, although I think the Coast Guard, you know, might be able to offer something different uh, if, uh, if we can educate the young people about the opportunities uh, for the Coast Guard. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, uh, that I'm going to be very interested to hear about that. And then um, there's a 2020 GAO report about um, manpower requirements determinations. And, um, you know, only a small portion of the workforce has been assessed. And, I, you know, that's problematic because, you know, that means that we're really not quite sure what some of the needs are in some of the disciplines and elsewhere could lead to overloading people, which, you know, might push them toward uh, deciding not to re-up or early retire if they're eligible um, and, uh, and other things. So uh, I'm really looking forward to your testimony and, and in particular, I um, hope you will highlight what Congress could do better to help you deal with these issues. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.